my dear children so i am back with the second video of the video series on management of natural resources class 10th science i am roshni from learner hub the free learning platform where you get to learn physics chemistry maths biology geography political science all for free at learnerhub.com so in this video our agenda is to learn more specifically in detail about forests because forests are our lifeline yes indeed so let's start the video So now let us look at the man management of each of the natural resources separately. So let us start with forests and wildlife management. As I said, forests and wildlife are very important and natural resource these days. Not only these days, since very beginning, forests have been a very useful natural resource. How? Because forest is a biodiversity spot. What do I mean by biodiversity? Biodiversity means you have, what, what, what does the term diversity means? Diversity means you have different kinds of people. These days you would have often heard that unity in diversity or I mean, diversity is a very common term these days. Diversity means different types of people belonging to um, different culture, different places, with different thoughts, so different people living together. So when you think of a forest, in forest you have so many different kinds of living organisms. You have different kinds of animals, you have different kinds of insects, you have different kinds of birds, different kinds of plants, right? So many different kinds of living organisms in the same area. So that is why it is known as a biodiversity spot. You have so many variety of living organisms in one area. So that is why forest is a very precious natural resource because you have so many different types of uh, living organisms in one area. Loss of diversity may lead to loss of ecological stability. Now what will happen? I mean, why do we need to manage forests and wildlife? Managing forests and wildlife means that protecting the forests and wildlife. Protecting the forests from being cut down to an unlimited extent. Again, protecting the wildlife from being killed so that they become such that they become to an extent that they become extinct. Because there have been many such animals which have become extinct or which are on the verge of extinction. Right? That is only because of too much of killing of those animals. Similarly, too much of cutting down of trees will bring an end to the existence of forests. So we have to prevent that and that is what is known as forests and wildlife management. Now what will happen if forests and wildlife are not managed? Biodiversity will be lost, right? And loss of biodiversity will lead to loss of ecological stability. So what do we mean by ecological stability? Ecological stability means that in, in this entire world, every living organism is dependent on one another. Right? For example, you have certain kinds of people who will, who survives by eating plants or plant products, right? Whom we normally call as herbivores or we in, in, for, in human terms, we call them as vegetarian. So people who are dependent on plants. Again, there will be certain kind of animals which are dependent on another animals. For example, snakes. Snakes will eat lizards. Similarly, cats. They will feed on mouse. Similarly, dogs will feed on cats. So if you think it this way, cat is dependent on the mouse, the population of the mouse. So now if all mice are extinct, what will happen? Cats will not have something to feed upon. Similarly, if all cats become extinct, dogs will not have anything to feed upon. So that means every living organism is dependent on other living organisms. So if there is a loss of diversity, that means if some of the species are getting extinct, it will cause an instability in the entire ecology because all other everybody else will also get impacted right so this will cause a disbalance in the ecology so that is why we should save forests as well as wildlife in order to maintain the ecological stability let us now talk about the stakeholders for the forests so what do i mean by stakeholders for forests Stakeholders are nothing but the people who are related to forests. Related in the sense there are some people who are benefited from the forests. 
people who are benefited from the forests or people who wants to benefit the forests so such people are uh, categorized under stakeholders of forests so let us look at who are these stakeholders people living in or near forests so there will be some tribe you would have seen that generally forests are huge uh, i mean vast spaces right so there you will have some tribal people living inside the forests or living nearby forests so such people are the first category forest department of the government so the forest officers and related people they are also related to forests the industrialists how are the industrialists related to forest we will see that and the nature enthusiasts nature enthusiasts are those who love nature and they want to protect nature so these are some of the stakeholders of forests now we will see how each of them are dependent on forests and how each of them um, help the forests or destroy the forest so we will talk about each of them in detail one by one so let us start with the people living in or near forests so what are the advantages or what are the um, facilities that these people get from forests and how do these people contribute to forests so these people get many advantages from forests for example they get bamboo for huts they construct their huts with the help of the bamboo trees and bamboo trees are nothing but present in the forests right baskets to collect and store food materials i mean normally these tribal people they stay far away from uh, normal city life and all right so they get most of their needs from the forests whether it is construction of their house or whether making baskets to collect food materials even they get their food materials from forests they get fruits vegetables nuts and medicines from forests there are so many medicinal plants right so which acts as medicines for so many different diseases so they get all these things from forests fishing in for they can people go for fishing and they they get fish which many of them consume hunting people go for hunting so but these at the same time this hunting fishing all these things are actually killing living organisms so when these things start happening to an unlimited extent i mean if this happens within a limit then the ecological stability is maintained but if it starts happening beyond the limit that means if you st if people start uh, cutting trees for their self interest if they start cutting too much of trees so it, that that will again cause a problem if they start hunting too many animals that will again cause extinction of that animal right so everything within a limit is fine so these are some of the things how these people get benefited from the forests but at the same time these people can harm forests if they extract too many things from forests next is the forest department of the government so what do these department do vast areas of forests are converted into monocultures of pine teak eucalyptus so what happened that means let us suppose i mean sometimes what does the government do they think that some of the i mean they have converted vast area, i mean generally wherever you have forests you have different types of plants different types of trees and different types of animals and living organisms now sometimes the government says that let us convert this forests into vast areas of monoculture of pine teak eucalyptus that means you will only have pine trees or only you will only have eucalyptus trees so what are the disadvantages in that case the biodiversity is destroyed because the so many different variety of plants and animals which was present before they all get destroyed so now you have only one variety of plant over that vast stretch of land now why does the government do so the government thinks that okay eucalyptus is something which is useful which helps in making the eucalyptus oil that that is used for medicinal purpose so let us grow more and more of eucalyptus so that is true in one sense but when you convert too much of forests into this monocultures that causes a harm because the biodiversity is destroyed as a result needs of local people is ignored as i mentioned in the previous slide the local people the people who are uh, residing in or around forests their needs cannot be fulfilled because if you have monoculture of eucalyptus they will not get different kinds of fruits vegetables for their survival right so their needs are ignored 
but it is a good source of revenue for forest department but when you have this monocultures it becomes a good source of revenue for the forest department so the advantages that the forest department get out of forest is that it, it's a good source of revenue right but at the same time the forest department should also take care of the fact that the forests are not completely destroyed so that the biodiversity is maintained the needs of the local people are also fulfilled they should they should also inculcate monocultures of eucalyptus pine or teak but they should do that to a certain limit they should not destroy the entire forest and do i mean and convert it into a monoculture right so only a portion of it can be uh, utilized for the same it is useful for industries obviously because from forest you get so many raw materials that helps in industries so now let us look at the industrialists forest is a source of raw material for factories because for factories you would need so many things as fuel for example you might need wood you might need some other uh, resources which are present in the forest so the forests are a very good source of raw material for industries as i mentioned for example if you need eucalyptus for preparing the eucalyptus oil so if you have a factory that prepares that eucalyptus oil so for them the raw material is the eucalyptus leaves so they will go to the forest and extract the eucalyptus trees from there not interested in sustainability of forest in one particular area but what is the mindset of the industrialists the mindset of the industrialists is to uh, grow is to make money from their factories they just want to expand their industries they want to expand their factories so they are not much bothered about the sustainability of the forest for example let us suppose there are different loka i mean forest is not located in one area right so there are different forests located in different area so now let us suppose that there is a factory which is coming up in some area x so the industrialists will try to get all raw materials from the forest which is located near x that means in the x locality all the forests are completely utilized and the industrialists are not at all bothered that the forests in that locality x will be completely destroyed is getting completely destroyed they do not want to sustain they are not interested in sustaining the forest of that particular area x once the entire uh, for i mean once the entire area of x is deprived of forest what will that industrialist do he will start getting raw materials from some forest in some other area say y again once that is destroyed completely he will go to some other area z right so that means the industrialists are not bothered about sustaining the forests in a particular area they just want raw materials for their factories and they are just extracting things from forests which is not right right so these industrialists should also put a check to extracting raw material for factories they should ensure that the forest should not be completely destroyed they should think about the sustainability of the forests nature enthusiasts these are a group of wonderful people who are not dependent on forests i mean everybody gets useful things from forests indirectly or directly but these nature enthusiasts are not directly dependent on forests but they have a role in management of forests these are the people who love nature and they want to save nature they want to protect the environment and that is why they want to protect the forests as well they they raise their voices against cutting down of too many trees they encourage people to plant more and more trees they protect wildlife so th these are a different group of people who are doing their best in order to save nature now there were some of the acts or there were some of the rules and laws made in uh, past also in order to conserve forests so that people do not cut down trees unnecessarily and disturb the ecosystem so there was some such act which was passed in 1908 known as the forest conservation act so what was the result of this act deforestation increased biodiversity decreased so even though this act was passed but it did not yield good results i mean even with this forest conservation act also biodiversity kept decreasing and deforestation kept increasing 
wildlife dwindled because as the more you cut forests the more you cut down forests what will happen animals will lose their um, source of food because most of the animals for example if you consider uh, deer or uh, goats or cows they all feed on plants right so if you cut down the plants they will have nothing to feed upon so that is how the wildlife will also get dwindled and the biodiversity will get spoiled again there was another policy or conservation act which came in 1988 known as the national forest policy so after this policy came up what was there in this policy villages along with forest department we will manage specific forest blocks like every forest block will have a forest department that means there will be a forest officer uh, who will be responsible for that particular forest right now there will be nearby villages as well so the villages as well as the forest officers together will manage those specific forests so that they will protect that particular forest from being cut down by anybody else now what was the result of this policy there was again no considerable success now again came up another forest management act in 1992 by 17 states known as joint forest management so this joint forest management act was uh, brought into life by 17 different states they together formed it and that is why it was known as joint forest management now in this considerable success was achieved because this time uh, this was uh, i mean this was agreed by 17 different states and it was taken up seriously and there was a considerable success achieved this time so you see that in order to con conserving forests is also not an easy task because it is not very easy to make each and every people understand the importance of forests because most of the times what happens is that these industrialists they uh, they become very much self centered and that they start cutting down forests and that is not right so in order to make each and every one understand that how precious forests are is again not an easy task so the nature enthusiasts the the village people who stay nearby the forest department they are all trying together to conserve forests so let us see how much we are able to conserve the same now let us look at some of the examples from history where people did so much of sacrifice and compromise just to conserve forests protection of khejri trees in khejrali village in rajasthan in rajasthan there is a, there was a village named khejrali and that village was called khejrali because of the plantation or because of the presence of so many khejri trees in that village now what once what happened was some people came up to cut down those khejri trees so there was a, a nature lover named amrita devi along with the villagers from nearby villages sacrificed their lives for the protection of khejri trees they stood in front of the people who came to cut down the trees and they told that if you want to cut the trees you will have to kill us and only then you will have to cut down the trees so they fought with them some so many of them sacrificed their lives for protecting those khejri trees so this is just so just imagine how i mean wonderful this yeah uh, example is i mean people are so very serious about conserving forests that they are even sacrificing their own lives right but at the same time there are some other group of people who in order to earn more money are cutting down the trees right so in order to maintain an ecological balance it is very much needed that adequate amount number of plants adequate number of animals birds insects adequate an amount of natural resources like water air soil everything is present in a proportionate amount only then the ecological stability will be maintained right so all of us should be able to understand this again there was another example which was which was popularly known as chipko andolan so what was this chipko andolan chipko the word ch chipko is a hindi word which means to stick to something so why was this known as chipko andolan that that was because once again it so happened that some people came to cut down the trees in a forest and they came 
during a time when the men of the village were not present so what did the women of the village do the village women clasped the tree trunks thus preventing the workers from felling down the trees so each woman clasped herself to the trunk of the tree and they did not allow the trees to be cut down so since everybody stuck themselves to the trees that is why it was known as chipko andolan so this was a very popular movement which took place at that time and these are some of the examples from history which actually encourage us which actually motivate us to conserve forests now let us talk about something called sustainable management what do we mean by sustainable management as i mentioned before we should always take care that forests in a particular area are sustained the forest should not get extinct i mean it, it should not get completely destroyed right so we should follow a management known as sustainable management so that the resources can be sustained the resources do not become extinct now one of the beautiful examples of sustainable management is given by the sal forests of arabari range there are these sal forests somewhere near west bengal now which was a, a, a utter waste forest i mean that forest was of no worth at that period of time i mean there was not much good cultivation there was not much um, useful things obtained from that forest so that forest was an utter waste at that point of at, in those days now there was a forest officer who was posted in that forest and what did he do he made use of this management what did he do he involved the villagers of the nearby villages in protection of badly degraded sal forests so he involved the village people to protect the forests so the villagers were given employment in silviculture and harvesting work so the villagers were paid for that now everybody wants to get a job everybody wants a earning for himself right so the nearby village people they are generally poor and they don't have anything to do they don't earn much right so if they get some kind of employment in the forest itself so they will do their part of job in a very nice way because they know that they are going to be paid for the same now all the villagers together along with the forest department along with the initiative of the forest department they worked so well that the waste forest became a wonderful one so what was the result the result was that the previously waste sal forest showed great improvement and it was valued rupees 12.5 crores so something which was worthless before became worth of 12.5 crores right so that is how by good management we can improve things that means many of the times it happens that even the villagers or the mostly the villagers or the village people who stay nearby the forest they are benefited from forests but at the same time sometimes those villagers only take undue advantage of the forest which is again not correct but if those villagers are only employed for the protection of the forests for improving the forests what will happen the forests will also get benefited as well as the villagers will also get a uh, earning for their living right so this is how forests this is so what did we study in the topic under forests and wildlife you saw that how forests are a wonderful resource how forests and wildlife are important in order to maintain the ecological stability what are the different ways by which forests should be conserved who are the people who are responsible for conserving forests who are the people who are responsible for destroying forests and some of the examples which from history where people have sacrificed their own lives for the conservation of forests so children i hope you found the video useful if you think that after watching this video your concepts for this lesson are crystal clear do not forget to mention in the comment section that concepts crystal clear now that will make us feel really happy and if you actually found the video useful do not forget to share it with your friends as well i will meet you all very soon with a new video with a new topic till then stay home stay safe take care bye bye